Namaste and welcome back to the JavaScript series. In the previous class, I had introduced you to the concept of functions, right? And you understood in JavaScript, essentially, there are four types of functions that you can write. And if any of you have missed this, please go back and watch this video. It is extremely helpful to understand the concept. But today, I would like to further go deeper into this concept of functions and first help you understand why do we need functions? What is the need for functions? That is the biggest question mark here, yes? Now to understand this, you must understand the very need for function comes from a principle called as the dry principle. Now what is the full form of dry? Do not repeat yourself. This is one of the fundamental principles of programming. Now you may be like, what do you mean by dry principle, Rohit? Can you give us more clarity? 100% I will do that. And the best way you can understand this is by taking an example. Let us assume I want to write a simple program whose job is something like this, okay? So let us assume I want to figure out what grade should be assigned to a student based on their percentage, right? For example, if a student gets grade A, it is assigned if they get 90% and above. Right? So if their percentage that they have scored is 90 and above, then obviously I'll assign them grade A because it's excellent performance. B is given if in case they get 80 to 89, which shows good performance. C is given between 70 to 79 percent, indicating average performance. D is given for 60 to 69 percent, indicating below average performance. And of course, I will be giving them grade F, which is assigned for less than 60 percent, which indicates extremely poor performance, right? Now I want to write a very simple program for this and I want all of you to try to follow along so that you understand what I'm saying. Now what I'll do is, I'll just bring up my editor here for your reference and here watch it. I'll first go and let us assume I'm now talking about one student, okay? Now let's assume I'll create a variable, I'll call it as student1 uh, marks. This is the marks that the student has scored. Let us assume this guy is a very brilliant chap and has scored around 93 marks, right? Now the question is, they've scored 93 out of how much? What is the total marks? So obviously I'll go here and I'll be creating one more variable. I will call it as student1 uh, max marks, right? Max marks. How much is the maximum marks you can score? Let us assume that is 100. Now if you know what is the mark scored and what is the maximum marks that can be scored, now you can calculate the percentage. Only if you calculate the percentage, then you can map it to the grade, yes? So now I'll be going here and I'll say, let uh, student one uh, percentage equal to, and everybody knows the formula to calculate percentage. The formula is very simple. First thing that you do is, you take the marks that you have scored, you divide it by the maximum marks which can be uh, scored, right? So in this case, student one max marks, right? You divide both and the divided result you multiplied by 100. That is how you get the percentage. And I don't think anything extraordinarily new I'm teaching it here. Everybody can figure this out, right? Okay, awesome. Now what I'm going to do is in the next line, I will now come and now that I know the percentage, I can map it to the grade, right? So now I need to check if it is uh, greater than or equal to 90, it is A. If it is greater than 80, then it is B. 70 is C. 60 is uh, D, so on and so forth. And this is the best use case for your if-else, if ladder, right? And although this also I have taught you, and if any of you have missed this, please go back and watch. This is an entire JavaScript course, and I've taught each and every topic required for you to master JavaScript, right? Any which ways, I'll be coming here and now I'll start with one if block inside which I will first go here and I will say, hey, listen, I want to check if the student one's percentage is greater than or equal to 90. If this condition is true, I will be coming inside and now what I will be doing is I'll go here and I'll create a variable called as student one grade like this. Initially, it is empty. Now I need to figure out what I should be giving to this grade. So I'll come here and now I will just be telling, okay, listen, the, if the percentage is greater than or equal to 90, then 100% the student uh, one grade, right? Uh, in this case, obviously has to be A. And this is a string, so I will be putting it inside single quotes. Yes, but my 
you know, exploration doesn't end here. Because if it is not greater than or equal to 90, then I'll come here and say else if, and again I'll check up a condition. So what I'll do is, I'll just copy whatever is written here inside. I'll come here and I'll paste. And I'll say if it is greater than 80. See, it's not greater than or equal to 90. But if it is greater than or equal to 80, it means it is between 80 to 90, right? It's very simple. And if this condition is satisfied, I'll be coming here and I will be now saying, okay, listen, now the student wants grade, you must assign it as B. Hope you understood. Now I'll come down here and I will say else, again if in case, because if it is not even greater than or equal to 80, then I must be coming here and further checking if it is greater than or equal to 70. If that is the case, I will be coming inside this and I will be telling that the student wants grade should now be C. I think you're getting the point. Again, if it is not even greater than or equal to 70, I'll come here and again put one more else if here. And uh, here I will be checking if it is greater than 60. Now, if it is greater than 60, I'll come inside this and I will tell student one grade should be D. Now, if it is not even greater than or equal to 60, then I think everybody can predict it means it is lesser than 60. I need not check it explicitly. So I will just come here and I will say the grade has to be F. I think everybody would agree with me on this. Am I clear? So it's quite simple. This is the marks that the person has scored. This is the total marks they can score. The mark score divided by the total marks multiplied by 100 gives me their percentage. Based on the percentage, I should assign a grade. I'm now checking what the percentage falls under and based on that, I'm assigning a particular grade, right? Now, will this work is the larger question. 150% it would work. For that, I need to execute and show you. I'm just bringing my terminal or command prompt here for your reference. And here, if I were to just go and execute this, uh, nothing came. Uh, let me just, uh, why nothing came? Common sense. You calculated everything, but you want the grade to be printed. If you want something to be printed, you need to console.log it. You need to print it. Without printing, nothing comes, right? So I'll go here and I will just tell uh, console.log and inside this, maybe I will just go and I will be printing the student's grade like this. Oops, student one, grade is what I want. Yeah, great. Understood? Now, if I were to go re-execute the code, clearly you can be noticing that the grade is A because he scored around 93. And if I were to change it and make it say 72 like this, and then if I were to go and re-execute it, clearly, okay, you're not able to see this because it's blocking it, C. So it works, it works perfectly. Now, the point here is, the point here is, what if, what if now, my friend, I want to go and calculate the percentage for the second student, another student, a different student. Now, don't you think the same process is going to repeat again? What process is going to repeat, sir, if you ask me? Now, what is going to repeat is, I have to again now, see here, I'll go here, copy this entire piece of code. I'll copy it. And after that, I'll come below this and I will again paste it. I am now going to repeat myself. See, I've again pasted it. This time, I'll go here and make this as student two marks. Let us assume they have scored around 62 marks. Next, I'll say student two's maximum marks is 100. Then I will calculate the student two's percentage by dividing the student two's total marks divided by the maximum marks multiplied by 100. Then I have to calculate the second student's grade. Then I will go here and say the second student's percentage if it is greater than or equal to this, okay? And then here also I should be changing it. Here also I should be changing it. Here also I should be changing it, right? And of course, I should now go here and instead of saying student one grade, I should make it student two grade, student two grade, student two grade, and here also two, here also two, and ultimately when I print also two. Which means clearly you can see if I were to look at this, right, if you look at the line, okay, if you notice totally, just to calculate the first student's grade, it was around 25 lines of code approximately if you remove all the spaces and all that. Now to calculate the second student, again one more 25 lines of code. I have to repeat, the logic is same. Now if I want to calculate the third student, another 25 lines. 
which means if 100 students grade I want to calculate, then 25 multiplied by 100, 2500 lines of similar code I should keep repeating myself. And that is what the dry principle is saying, do not repeat yourself. If the logic is the same, then you write it once and make JavaScript repeat it again and again. And for this, this is a best use case for what you call as a function. Yes, because if you notice, what are you doing? You're performing a certain activity or task where you're calculating, where, where you have the marks, the total marks, you're calculating the percentage, then there is a grade and uh, you're just displaying it. So this activity is repeating, right? So this repeated activity, if I put it inside a function, then that function can be reused again and again. Reusing is different, repeating is different. Repeating is bad, reusing is great. Now the same thing, if I use a function, how would it look? Let me show you. Now my dear friends, let me show you the power of functions and how we can reuse code and not repeat ourselves, right? Very simple. One easy thing that we can be doing is, we will now go here and we will, uh, instead of, see if you notice, if I have to calculate a student's percentage, I need their uh, max, I need their marks code, I need their maximum marks, after which percentage is code, and then I have these conditions which will check, assign the grade, print the grade. Same thing happens for the second student, third, fourth, fiftieth, hundredth as well, right? So what I'm going to now do here is, this code where I'm calculating percentage, assigning grade and printing it, this logic, I will cut it. Because that is common for every student. And what I will do is, I will now go and create one function. I'll call the function as calculate grade function, like this. Inside that function, I will paste whatever I have copied. Okay, and uh, let me just indent this correctly so that it is visible. As you can clearly see, it is inside a function. Now for this function to calculate the grade, it requires the marks, it requires the maximum marks, correct? So what I will do is very simple. I will now go here and see this is the marks and this is the maximum marks. Instead of writing it outside like this, I will pass it as input to the function. Technically, we call this as parameters. I've already explained this in the previous class. Now I will remove this. Understood? So now you have a function called as calculate grade, which will accept the marks code and the total maximum marks that can be scored. And after which it will perform the logic and it will directly print it. If that is the case now, I don't have to repeat this logic again. But if you don't repeat it, then how are you going to uh, calculate, sir? Very simple. Those of you who attended the previous class know that once you create a function, if you want the function to be activated, you want the function to work, you should call it. How to call? What is the name of the function? Calculate grade is the name of the function. This function is going to take two inputs from me. One is the ma marks that I have scored and the total marks that can be scored or not total, maximum marks that can be scored. If I were to do that, then please understand this 92 is passed as input to this. This 100 is passed as input to the student maximum marks. Post which they will calculate the percentage then they will check which grade it falls into and they will be printing it, that's all. So now if in case I were to go here, bring up my command prompt and if I were to just go and sort of execute this, clearly you can notice grade is A. Now you want the second student, no problem, I will call this function again and this time say this student has scored 62 out of 100 and now if I execute you can see first student A, second student D, but I did not repeat. If you want the third student, I will just go here and say, this student scored 32 out of 50. Maximum marks is 50, which comes up to around 64% if I'm not wrong. And now if I were to go here and execute it, first person A, second person D, and third person also D. Understood what I'm trying to say? So it works perfectly. This is the real need for functions, which is to logically group a functionality so that it can be reused again and again and again with different values as input. If you want, you can directly print the grade or if you want this grade, you can return it. Those of you who have come for the previous class know what I'm talking about, returning. You can return it. 
and collect it as output and then print. I'm leaving that up to you. But I hope through this you have understood what is the real need for functions. Now, just think about this, right? For example, every time a user is trying to log in, you need to validate their credentials, username and password, is it matching? Don't you think there is some validation logic? That validation logic, every time somebody is trying to sign in, will you keep rewriting the code? No, you'll have to reuse it. Once you write it and in different, different, different places, you reuse it. Yes? For example, in an e-commerce application, let us assume uh, when the person is checking out, you need to calculate the discount that you need to give that person. Now, this discount calculation is a logic. Now, this you must be reusing in different, different places. Some place they may get 5% discount, in another place they may get 10% discount, in another place they may get 50% discount. So the percentage of discount is changing, but the logic of discount calculation is the same. So you have to reuse this code in multiple places instead of rewriting it. Understood what I'm trying to say? We will explore all this and more in depth. Anyways, this is where I would like to end this particular video. I will catch you in the next one where we will now be exploring functions in even greater detail in JavaScript. Thank you so much for listening. And if you find any value in these videos, please make sure to leave a like, a comment and subscribe. It helps me and the team keeps us motivated and definitely helps recommend the channel to people like you who would also learn a lot from it. Thank you so much. Take care.